What's what's it feel like heading into year two? How how different does it feel? Program building, roster, all those things going into the second year. Yeah, I'm much more comfortable. I mean, it's. Um, I think anytime you take over a program like Auburn, which in my opinion is one of the top ten programs in the country, it's. You know, the expectations um, are to win and and to win pretty fast, and that's that's the only pressure that you really feel but if you're in year two our roster is better I feel better in the building um, I love the chemistry I feel I love the culture that I see being developed among our players and and staff and and I do believe and, and I've said this to everybody if you know I do think we have to be a little patient and this is a day and time that not many people want to be patient and I get that and, that, and that's okay but I do think to build it the right way that will last is the way we're doing it. And um, we're recruiting at a high level, and it's uh, ever-changing. <laughs> recruiting is it's ever-changing every single day. And um, But I do see the fruits of that. I think the 24 class is a really, really solid class. Now, how well can those guys play in year one in this league? I, I don't know. Um, but I'm um, excited about what I saw in spring ball, excited about the chemistry of the staff, excited about DJ Durkin and Charles Kelly and, and Derek Nix and, and the additions we made, Tanner Burns doing special teams and with the, the new rule now that, you know, guys can assist in technical instruction for our players. I think it's a good, good, good rule. Um, and it's going to assist us because I think we, I have some of the best ones in those roles in the nation. So. I feel really comfortable at Auburn. I think we fit there. My family fits there and um, excited about year two. I have no clue what that means in the win-loss column. I really don't. But I do, and the reasonable expectation is for you to see a competitive football team. And, um, and we, we plan to deliver on that. You about a month out, I guess, from, from fall camp. What's the general health of the, of the roster right now? Yeah, you know, um, everyone is pretty good. Alex McPherson's battling an issue that, um, you know, it, it's a weird issue, and I, I really don't want to go into that, but he's, he's battling one. I think he'll be okay. Um, and um, unfortunately, we lost Tyler Scott for the year with, with an ACL and, and workouts. Other than that, I think we're in pretty good Tate Johnson's having a little surgery, but it's, it's nothing that should cost him missing a bunch, any, any time come fall camp. Coach, uh, Texas and Oklahoma are joining the conference this year. This is already a very, very com competitive conference. Just w what's your thoughts on them joining and how is that gonna make the level of com competition tougher? Well, I mean, the competition's gonna be tough and then you add those two to it, it's gonna be even, you know, even that, that adds one more game to your schedule that's, that's challenging, but that's why you want to be in this conference. And, you know, A.D. Cohen can, can talk about all the other dynamics that brings. I, I, I really don't know everything that that means, but I know you're bringing two really good football teams into this conference that will provide our fans and our players another great opportunity to play a great football team. I like it better when it's at Jordan-Hare, but uh, – but on the road too, those would be great memories. That's one of the reasons that, you know, we use in recruiting, you want to come play in this conference is, man, you get to go to those places. And so you're adding two of the elite programs in the country to this to this already difficult, um, what I think is the best conference in America. So it does make it difficult, but that's also exciting and why as a coach and as a player, you want to play in, these, in this conference. You've got Oklahoma coming to Jordan-Hare, and it's going to be their first SEC game at an SEC school. What, what's that like? Well, Jordan-Hare, I think, will uh, provide for them a great challenge, you know, and um, got to spend some time around Coach Venables uh, a couple of times. We ran into each other on a vacation out of the blue with our families and a few years back, and now uh, visiting with him at SEC Media Days, I think a lot of him. I think he does things the right way, and he'll have a great football team. Um, hope, hopefully, uh, we'll be prepared as a team because I know Jordan Hare will be, and it'll be uh, there. There, I hope 
I don't know what time is that game. Uh, I think afternoon. I wish they would get the night version of Jordan Hare, but uh, Jordan Hare will be rocking either way, and uh, I think they'll enjoy that experience for sure. You, you talked about the the off field guys being able to coach. How, how valuable is that to, to get more hands on, you know, one on one type coaching that that maybe you haven't had a chance to do in the past? Well, I think it's it was due for that. I mean, um, we have 120, 25 kids, and this new world of them, you know, capturing the hearts and minds of your players is vital. And man, the more hands uh, that we have on them, the better chance we have to do that, particularly if you trust the people that you have to, that are the same mind and same accord and speak the same language about how we want to build things and who we want to build as men first and then players second. and. I'm confident in the guys that we've hired in that building to, to be able to assist not only in instruction but also in winning over, you know, our, our players. So I think um, I'd put our guys up against anybody in the country. Q, I know you said in December that your goal was a top five class this time around. Now that you're about halfway through, are you confident that you guys can get there? Yeah, I, I can't keep up with it. I don't know where we are. I, 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 but, yes, I'm confident that we're going to uh, recruit very, very well. Um, you guys know the rankings better than I, and it ebbs and flows with the commitments and decommitments. And and I think all of that is is, is still fluctuating and never final until, until you get them there. But that's my goal. I've spoken it and told you all that, and, and I do believe we're going to be – really close to a top five class when it's all said and done. Coach, speaking of confidence, what's your confidence in the quarterback play of Peyton Thorne this year? I'm really confident. I just, I believe in him. I believe in his leadership. I'm, I meet with him every single week right now, and he has a knowledge of the game that is as good as I've been around for a quarterback. And, and now that we've gone back to some of the things I'm really familiar with and I just I think he's going to be more comfortable now. The pieces around the quarterback have to play very well, and I think we've improved that. And hopefully um, now, how well can those freshmen play at certain positions? I, I don't know. I've seen it go really, really well, and I've seen some have to have time to develop. But I'm uh, I'm optimistic and believe in Peyton for sure and excited. Look, I thought Hank had a heck of a spring too, and as did uh, Holden. And Walker, I think, has a, a ceiling that's really, really high. Um, it's just he's really, really young, and we've got to see him develop. Do you know how much you've been able to talk to Brian Petit's family? Do you have any sort of update from the past couple of years? I text with them almost daily, if not daily. Um, I get videos from them daily, and you know, our thoughts and prayers are with he and his family. He is getting better every single day. He does have a, a, um, a road ahead of him that's, that's challenging. But um, praise to God that he's okay right now as far as his, he, he is alive and he's, got, he's recovering and, and we're thankful for that. Could you talked about the disease of me. How have you been able to change that this whole season? Well, I depend upon our culture council. And um, we have a lot of great meetings, and they, they're, the, they're in charge of the, of the culture of our team and the standard that we ask them to meet. And I think they've been very, very consistent in enforcing that and demanding that of each teammate. Um, that's always going to be a challenge, and it's not going to get easier. Um, in the world we live, it's, um, it's easy to, to be about me. Uh, more than team or us and I think the, the teams that do the best job of that will have a distinct advantage over the others and um, but I do think it it really I mean it can start in the team room with me standing up there but if it doesn't translate into the locker room with some leadership there um, my voice is kind of uh, minimized so proud of the culture council we had another election here recently for them and like the, I love the selections that were made and excited about uh, them carrying forth the standard and enforcing it. You just to sort of clarify on Alex, you do expect him to play this season? Oh yes, I do, I do. And um, you know, it's not, a, it's not an injury, it's just he's just battling a, a, a health issue that um, 
it's taken a while really to, to get diagnosed. It has to do with his, his, his gastro test intestines and um, and he's uh, I think we I think they're on the path to, to being on the right track. Coach last year you know Iron Bowl absolutely came down to the wire heartbreaking loss you guys you know had the whole off season to kind of stew on that has that has that game has that been a motivator for you and your, you and your squad this off season? Yeah I'm not big on um, using games as motivation you bring that up makes me sick again my stomach just turned and just rolled but uh because we should be one and oh in the iron bowl and and that means something to to me it means something to our people it means something to our players and it's sickening that we didn't get it done uh in that game um but i i don't th i think things like that are just man those are insignificant motivators uh, long term uh, because you lost a game or something that you could have won so um, really don't use that a whole lot